Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Queen Pins Roundtable with our directors, Gita and Aaron. We are so grateful for all of you to be here today and to support this movie, which I know we were just talking about in our little breakout room, and we were all talking about our secret couponing uh, <laughs> habits. Great. So we just wanted to ask you some questions. Ashley, you are up first. Hi, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. Of course, we're excited to talk, talk with you and talk coupons. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I personally like that the female leads don't resort to tearing each other down, even when things get super stressful. Was that always the plan to have these two women love and support each other no matter what? Yeah, that was definitely intentional. Uh, we talked early on when we were writing the script that it was really important that Aaron and I were married, but we're also best friends. But also we have other friends that we've known for 20, 25 years that have gone on significant journeys and had tremendous obstacles and really it was the obstacle they were fighting, not turning on each other. And that was the obstacle. So it was definitely intentional to do that. And it's very different than what a lot of comedies with, you know, buddy comedies are like. So we tried to like change that up. Usually in a buddy movie, yeah. like two thirds of the way through, they have mm -hmm. a big fight and they sort of like mope around for five minutes and then yeah. come back together. And we really wanted to avoid that mm -hmm. cliche. And also, you know, to us, it's friends lift each other up and, and don't. Uh, so that was something that we were definitely trying to avoid from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Sorry, guys. Technical issues. Lynette, you are up next. Hi. Hi, Lynette. How are you? Hi. I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, love the film. Thank you. Very funny. Um, I would love to know if there's any fun facts that you could share about the film that maybe the audience does not know. I could tell you, we could tell you about uh, why we wrote this script. And do you have I, I have a fun fact that isn't in the movie, mm -hmm. but I think you guys might find interesting mm -hmm. is uh, there's the TLC show Extreme Couponing that was on. Uh, the detective who who dealt with the real investigation, he believed that the reason that show was able to have such big savings is because they were using coupons from these women yeah. that were counterfeiting them. And when yeah. they arrested these women, that show went off the air. Mm -hmm. So and they he actually yeah. attempted to try to prove that they were using yeah. counterfeit coupons from these women. But. It never. Well, the show shut down before he could. Yeah, yeah. Do he never yeah. sort of pursued it. But yeah. we always thought that was very interesting. Yeah. That the show went away as soon as these women were arrested. Yeah. The the real women. That that's my fun fact. Yeah, <laughs> my. I mean, it's not a fun fact. It is a fact, though. If that <laughs> counts, and that would just be that we um, in Hollywood spent the last seven years writing and trying to get our scripts made, and we had some successful scripts that we would get recognized in the industry and then we would get an amazing cast attached to it. And then we'd go into rooms with studios and financiers and they would say, listen, we love the script. We love the cast, but you guys have no value. So we can't give you money to finance your movie. And that kept happening over and over and over again for seven years. And finally we were like, well, how do we change our value in this industry? And we're known for more of our dramatic work and before that documentaries and we came from journalism and we said let's find a comedy to write that is maybe a little bit more commercial and um, allows us to be able to tell a story that we feel is close and personal to us and then what we ended up writing is a story about two women who feel undervalued and discounted in their lives and end up finding a loophole to succeed and we feel like thanks to queen pins we changed our value Thank you. I love that. Thank you, guys. Amanda, you are up. Hi, thanks for joining us. Um, hey. First, I'm a huge Bollywood fan. Oh. So I watch the Bollywood, I react to it on my YouTube channel. So, and when I saw, you know, you created, you two created like the Bollywood, the initiative to 
you know, bring Bollywood to more Hollywood movies. I, I just wanted to know a little bit about that and why you think that's important to mix the two. Yeah, well, we're a pretty good combination. He's Aaron's from rural Maine and I'm my family's from India and we feel like we're stronger together because we're taking our two cultures and backgrounds and merging them to make interesting stories and tell stories about our lives. And we thought, what a great way to kind of take this to the next level, which is bringing Hollywood filmmakers to India to learn about what Bollywood is like and vice versa, bringing Indian filmmakers to the United States and really getting them access to doors that weren't open to us when we first came. But now we can open those gates a little bit more to key decision makers to just help other artists succeed and not have to fight as much as we've had to over the past seven years. So cool. Thank you. Thank you. Tessa. Hey guys, thanks for taking the time today. Thought the movie was super fun. Really enjoyed it. Great cast. Can you talk a little bit about bringing on people like, like Vince and Kristen? Yeah, I mean, I think when we wrote the script, we didn't have anybody necessarily in mind for Connie. But then when somebody said Kristen Bell, we just knew that she would be great. And when we met with her and she had responded to the script, one of the first things she said to us was, you know, when she's like, for some reason, even if my characters are doing criminal acts, breaking the rules, audiences still usually love me. And that was something that she recognized in herself and in her work, but we knew it was exactly what we needed for Connie. And then, you know, she had worked with Kirby before and, you know, we met with Kirby and she just seems so perfect. Um, and then Paul and Vince as well, uh, you know, when we met with them, they, they had a friendship going off camera before and had wanted to work together. So it really felt like both of those main duos were friends off camera, had this great chemistry, and we had just hoped that it would carry over into the movie. And we kind of think we're like the third uh, buddy duo yeah. in, the, in the movie. <laughs> and also, you know, in uh, screenwriting, the the love story, the B story of the movie is the love story usually. And we just wanted to try something more creative. And in this case, we thought, wouldn't it be fun if that B story was Vince and Paul's journey, which is oil and water. And then in the end, they end up really appreciating their friendship and valuing that friendship. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Robin, go for it. Hi guys. Thanks Hi so Robin. Much. Yes. Um, the movie was hilarious. I loved it and really awesome cast. I wanted to know, was that a real Michael J. Fox quote? And if so, what made you guys want to include that piece in the film? It, it is a real Michael J. Fox quote. And at some point we, we knew we wanted there to be this quote about family and we were looking at different quotes and we saw this one that from Michael J. Fox and we grew up both loving him and our casting yeah. director, one of her first jobs was casting family ties. And <laughs> it just felt like uh, we, we miss that there's not more Michael J. Fox out there now. And it yeah. felt perfect. It felt yeah. uh, like he would be in a movie like this. Uh, so it, it yeah. all just fits. And also at one point, the president of Mexico is um, President Fox. So we also thought it was really funny that this dialogue was also happening. It's like, as JoJo's trying to figure out like, wait, like the actor? <laughs> so it all just kind of felt like it played well into the comedy. Hopefully he sees it. I yeah, would, we want Michael J. Fox to... to see this movie. <laughs> I love it. Um, Shell. Can you make that happen? No I'm kidding, it's your turn. <laughs> uh, hi, thank you for being here. Um, you mentioned that this is a more commercial movie than you're used to making. And I wanna take that literally as far as commercials go. How was it trying to incorporate all the brands that you see throughout that? Did you have to pass legal? Were they clamoring to be included? How did that work? <laughs> I mean, it was a little all across the board, but we definitely worked very hard getting a lot of permissions and clearances to use real brands. Yeah. Because, you know, we come from documentary and yeah. dramatic work and it had to be authentic. And, you know, yeah. we, we were talking about how proud we were of a, a brand like Wheaties yeah. to come on board knowing that, you know, we were kind of saying, oh, this box of Wheaties was stale. But they and also do a good thing and correct their mistake. If, even if it was a stale, they did the right thing and gave them 
honored it and made sure they got she got a nice new fresh box of Wheaties, you know. So that but was But they important. also embraced the yeah. the comedy of it. They they got that we weren't like yeah. trying to disparage them and they just really yeah. like owned it and and worked with us. And one of yeah. our favorite scenes is this that scene where Kristen is sort of staring at this box of Wheaties and it's like Kristen Bell, but then it's Serena Williams on the box of Wheaties and Dolly Parton's music is playing and it feels like these icons of like female empowerment all together in that moment. And we just yeah. loved that they were willing to go on the journey with us. Yeah, that's one of our favorite scenes. And we hope that um, people see it as like a really like a rallying cry for women's empowerment. Great. Thank you. Heather, you're up. Hello, hello. Thank you for taking time with us today. Hi, Heather. So, when I was first watching the movie, first I was thinking, this is supposed to be a comedy. Why am I about to cry? <laughs> because I was watching the IVF journey. But um, focusing on the coupons, did anyone really get into it? Did you have anybody dumpster dive or take their binders to the store? I, I mean, I'm not saying I've ever done any of those things. <laughs> yeah. did it, because I totally have. Yeah. But not the point. <laughs> did anybody? Did anybody really kind of get into it to see how it really feels? For, for sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Kristen, her Kristen's grandmother was a huge couponer. I know. Yeah. And Kirby yeah. really jumped in, maybe not to a dumpster, but <laughs> she would talk to us about like you know every Sunday she was clipping coupons and putting them in a binder, and she's like, it takes a lot of time, and mm -hmm. and she went into the store and would use a lot of coupons, and she was like, I. I almost didn't believe it when I read the script about like the judgment that you might feel, but she's like, I really felt this judgment when yeah. I pulled out all of these coupons, yep. but then she's like, I saved so much money. I didn't care. She's like, I'm owning it. And <laughs> yeah, I thought it was really, she was saying like, I think she got like a case of water for free. And she was like, I was so ecstatic walking out. Cause she was like, I can't believe I got this for free, mm -hmm. but um, it was actually a really great experience for her psychologically of feeling like this, feeling like down when people were seeing what she was trying to do, but then feeling that rush of the coupon high. And what we hope this movie really does is take away any stigma behind coupons, because we really believe you are far smarter to use a coupon than having to pay full price for something. So why pay full price if you have a coupon sitting there that gives you something off? Absolutely. So, I agree. No, thank you. Really thank you. Agree. To us, yeah. we never judge our characters and <laughs> yeah. we always... Like we feel like it's a yeah. love letter to extreme coupon users because yeah. when we saw that world, we're just like, this is fascinating, the kind of yeah. money they save. And we, yeah. we loved it. And we think they're just really smart for doing what they do. <laughs> Renisha's queen thrifty. So let's hear what she's got to ask about yeah. saving money. Best name. Queen I thrifty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am I'm not an extreme couponer, but I am a couponer. And that's where I was kind of wondering what inspired you all to take that direction with the film. Because a lot of people are against couponers and they get upset, you know, when you're in the store and you're paying for your stuff and you're leaving out paying pennies. You know, I wanted to know what that inspiration was. And I think you just answered it. I don't know if you want to kind of elaborate a little bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think there is something in the U.S. economy. We were doing a whole study to write this script about the importance of coupons. And what we found is you, coupons are the foundation of our economy. Without coupons, people aren't buying. When you have the question, is it a need or is it a want? Now, when you put that coupon there with a ticking time clock, it automatically becomes a need. So people are purchasing, but they're also getting a good deal. And we read about J.C. Penney and heard that when, like years ago, a CEO tried to get rid of coupons, and when they, when he did it, because he wanted to give fair prices for everybody. His plan was, we'll get rid of coupons, but have everyday low prices. And when he did that, he almost bankrupted the company, and the company lost four billion dollars. And so that is just like one company to see that financial impact was surprising to us. But then we understood, like this is. Also, just an anomaly in the U.S., right? Like in other parts of the world, they don't use coupons. But here, it's such a tie to our economy that there's a value to it. And now- I think it also has to do yeah. with this culture yeah. here of like, you want to feel these little wins. You want to feel like you're getting a good value. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like that is kind of tied to the American spirit. So <laughs> I don't know that. if that helps. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. 
Picks. I love it. I'm feeling I'm feeling the couponing and running through me. I'm going to go cut some coupons. Yeah. Jana, you're up. So I wanted to know, um, you tend to have a lot of human connection pieces in everything that you do. In this particular one, you talk a little bit about um, the power of that handwritten letter and the message that you want audiences to take away from that. Can you talk about that a little bit and why that was such a key component and sort of that relationship between um, Vince Vaughn's character and Paul's character? Sure, yeah. I mean, first of all, Gita loves to handwrite <laughs> letters to people and, and when yeah. she does it, it really, it moves them. And it's not just getting an email from someone or a text from someone. It's like somebody took the time to sit down and write out a letter to you to tell you that they're thinking of you. And I think we've lost that a little bit. And, and then Vince had come up with this idea where he's like, what if, what if I carry like an old World War I letter with me? And, and then our friend Leo, he's like, you know, my grandfather fought in World War I and would write letters to my grandmother. I still have them. Mm -hmm. And we started reading them and they were so beautiful. So the letters in the movie are actually based off of these real yeah. letters. And, you know, to yeah. us, it's just like we, we kind of felt like as well, postal inspectors, postal workers were being yeah. undervalued. And we wanted to kind of point out like how important they are. Yeah. I, I mean, I think so much of the power of the letter is really about that human connection, Jenna, that you were right. It's like, we feel like with technology today and people today, it seems like there's, even though we can communicate more, it feels like we're more distant than ever from people. And what we are hoping to do through our stories and our work is really try to remind people that we love each other there's a human connection that needs to be formed there. And how do we get people to do that? And queen pins, it happens to be, let's all try to letter write. Let's send a letter to someone that you love or someone who's helped you or inspired you in your life and just tell them that you're thinking of them and you appreciate them. It, it all <laughs> sounds much more dramatic than a comedy, but yeah. it, to us, it <laughs> so was true. like, we would never want to just do like a surface comedy. Like we would really want there to yeah. be some heart and some depth and some yeah. some ideas yeah. behind the the comedy. If you guys have ever, um, if you guys ever want to see another movie of ours, the one thing that really ties the human connection is called "The Way We Get By," and it's a documentary about three senior citizens who greet troops at an airport heading off to war and returning home in a tiny town in Maine. Tiny town in Maine. Aaron's mom is one of the subjects in that film, and it. But it's yeah. so much about just the human connection. Yeah. How much a handshake or a hug can can mean to someone. And that movie changed us. Making that film was like our film school, but it also changed us profoundly in who we wanted to be as human beings, who we wanted to be as film directors, who we wanted to be as husband and wife. Because what you realize is that like one of the subjects in the film says, in a hundred years, who's gonna care? I totally missed how he said it. How do you <laughs> say it? They can watch the movie. Yeah. <laughs> But it, what really matters is being present with the people around you and letting them know how much you love them. And we hope that that message carries on through all of our work. 